Ravens over the Buccaneers on Thursday night, 27-22. We will continue to make our preview and picks for the rest of week eight and some trades happening now before the trade deadline. Robert Quinn, the newest member of the Philadelphia Eagles, all that and more coming up on today's Peacock and Williams. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Feel free to start getting those mailbag questions in for next week. Maybe as you're watching the games this weekend, you think I got something <laughs> for P and W. You can hit us there or in the comments on YouTube. Thanks for making us your first listen every day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Today's episode of P and W is sponsored by Simply Safe Home Security with Fast protect technology exclusively from simply safe 24 7 monitoring agents capture evidence to accurately verify a threat for faster police response there's no safe like simply safe visit simplysafe.com slash locked on nfl to learn more tom brady doesn't look like he's having a good time matt uh that was my no. big takeaway. I, I i would say 90% of his snaps, he is scowling, yelling at somebody, frustrated with himself, looking at the sideline, yelling at the ref. I I don't know if the guy should have come back. Like, this is yeah, miserable right. for him. <laughs> I guess he just announced his divorce. Not that that's my business or care, but right. a lot going on in his world. And I don't think the game has passed him by, but he sure doesn't look like he's enjoying any of it. Um I know that there are Brady apologists, and of course he deserves this, that are saying things like, yeah, but he needs a tight end, and he needs a, a slot receiver, and they got problems at left guard. And I'm like, well, he's got Godwin and Evans. I mean, it, it, so if we gave him Gronk and Welker in his prime and Mankins, then they would be okay? Like, no kidding. I mean, I mean, are we going to give Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, and Jordy Nelson too? I mean, why don't we throw Randy Moss on the box too? Yeah, or, you you know, I mean, maybe the Chiefs want Tyree <laughs> Kill back. Like, they're not the only team that has not a perfect roster. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's what makes you great is you can right. navigate a non perfect situation. And, and to, to be honest, Trent, Tom Brady's not playing bad. He's you know, okay. there's drops yeah, out right. there. Yeah. There was a nice little uh there was a nice little play design. Looked like he was gonna have Godwin for a touchdown and Leonard Fournette goes off sides, and so they have to kick a field goal instead. Right. And, yeah, that's a good point. You know, I mean, there's a lot of bad that was going on, so you can't really put it on Brady either. And it's he does need some help, but it's not necessarily talent. I feel like maybe the coaching switch could be part of it. Like if you want good. to point something, I don't know. They're they're just not executing, and you can say that about a lot of teams in the NFL when things don't go well, but um, it's clearly not just Brady, but he's he and he's clearly not having a good time right now on the football field. No, and as a team, they're not playing well. They just lost to the Steelers, Panthers, Ravens on a short week in Tampa that lost Andrews and Bateman. I mean, basically a team without weapons, and Tampa can't run the ball at all. They give up 231 yards on the ground. They're bad on third downs, you know. Uh, the Ravens almost had 40 minutes of possession in this game. Like this really wasn't close in the second half, even though Tampa put up some kind of garbage time numbers to make it look better. Right. So because they can't run the ball, now they're trying to figure out like what run do you just throw the ball every down? And so right. the run pass split is weird. They can't really figure out first downs, third downs are bad. Something goes wrong on every third down. So, Hey, they're great on second downs though. <laughs> right right, you know, exactly. like, yeah, right like what do you like and you keep thinking well it's got i mean you got brady and he's not playing terrible like you can't just look at brady and be like well he's garbage and too old and can't play anymore you know he, he's old. no no um maybe he doesn't have the same zip he once did but he, he's he's not the problem but there's a lot else going on but the line's not playing well you know penalties at the wrong time yeah uh, yeah you know, injuries, of course, are, are taking their toll. But if you have Mike Evans and, and Chris Godwin, and then Julio was in there and scored a touchdown in this game, and you know, that's enough weapons for Brady. And they just got to play better. And so if, if they think Aaron Rodgers would like to have Godwin and Evans, 
<laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> you know? No doubt. Uh, I mean, no. so I, they're in a bad spot. I'm not digging a grave for them or for Brady. I wonder, I mean, if he's really getting divorced, no one's going to tell him he has to retire. Does he come back next year? I mean, sure look, doesn't look like he's having fun. Well, you know, uh, Matt, once again, Tom Brady married to the game. Hmm. So there you go. So why yeah, why not keep it rolling? Is there a team out there that he likes more than the Bucks that he might want to finish his career? Yeah. With? Is he is he done done now and realizing, man, maybe I shouldn't even come back and so, um, yeah, uh, um, a, a lot to be decided there with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Tom Brady's future. What about the Ravens' future? In yeah, the I wanted to talk about them a little bit. We're kind of brushing over the Ravens. This yeah. is a gigantic win for them. I mean, again, short week on the road, which you thought was a quality opponent or at least has been. But anytime you win a, a Thursday nighter on the road, uh, I think that's a monumental win. They don't play again until – next Monday. So they get like 10 days off before they go to the saints. I imagine they're favored there then a buy. So they play once in like the next 25 days. And then, and then their schedule is Panthers, Jags, Broncos, Steelers, Browns, Falcons, Steelers. And until they play the Bengals in week seven in week 18, which might not even matter. Like Baltimore is set and you know, Andrews and Bateman, you can bring them back slow now. Like they're in a really good spot. Yeah, getting getting the full complement of weapons back and, and figuring out their ground game is so important for the Ravens. And it is looking good where they're at now after this big win for them to kick off week eight. Yeah, and their biggest rival in the division now lost Jamar Chase. So the Ravens are in great shape. Yeah, absolutely. More on Jamar Chase, the yeah. injury. We will make picks for that. Cincinnati Bengals and Browns game on Monday Night Football. We've got the Eagles coming up as well, who made a big trade for Robert Quinn. And we'll look at the, the Eagles schedule. So favorable, I think, for both Baltimore and Philadelphia the rest of the, the season is what I'm seeing. And there's some other notes about some possible trades when we'll make our mm -hmm. uh, previews and picks for the rest of week seven that we did not hit on our six pack of picks from yesterday's program. And if we're not talking about your team today, go back and, and you get our picks for uh, for your team that that was part of the six pack. Like that's, that's where you want to be right, Matt. You want to be part of the Peacock and Williams from six pack every single week. That's how, you know, your team has arrived. All right. All that and more coming up next on Peacock and Williamson. Here's a sports analogy for you though. When it comes to protecting your home, uh, you're worried about burglars, right? You're worried about what could be happening when you're not around and you're not there to watch over your home yourself or maybe while your family is asleep at night, your home is like the end zone and you need the absolute strongest defense you can muster. This is why I use and trust Simply Safe Home Security. It's Simply Safe. Your safety is the only thing that matters. It's cutting edge technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back. So you always know your home is safe. We talked a little bit about that at the open, about some of those uh, professional monitoring systems that are in place. But for me, it's all about the crystal clear, high definition, live stream security cameras of your home. And you can get whatever security cameras in whatever spots you need to with Simply Safe. And you can monitor the outside of the home when you're on the inside of your home. When you're not at home at all, you can open up the app and see what's happening on your property. Make sure everything is exactly as you want it. And, of course, that 24-7 monitoring, even when you're not paying attention, somebody is and can make the appropriately appropriate moves when necessary, even if you're not home or not reachable. So customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL to learn more. There's no safe like simply safe. Thanks again, everybody for making Peacock and Williamson your first listen today for your second listen today. Check out locked on sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only locked on can provide like Brian Peacock and Matt Williamson that might show up on locked on sports today, locked on sports today available on this app, YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. How much does Robert Quinn move the needle for you, Matt, for this Philly, Philadelphia Eagles team that already hasn't lost a game that are just flat out rolling? Uh, we will make our picks here coming up for that Eagles Steelers game, which no doubt you've done a lot of work on with your Pittsburgh Steelers at two and five traveling to the six and oh Eagles. But uh, let's talk about this trade first with Robert Quinn. Looks like a fourth round pick that is going to the uh, the Chicago Bears for Robert Quinn, uh, his teammate. 
Roquan Smith kind of upset by it. You know, big win yeah, yeah. Bears and they trade away one of their best players and the bears are picking up 7.1 million of Quinn's salary. So uh, it, not only do they get a premier pass rusher, the Eagles only have to pay the vet minimum is about 700,000 the rest of the year. Yeah. And he's not a free agent after the year. I mean, I know he's making substantial money, but you can make that decision afterwards. It, it's kind of a, Von Miller light type of trade that the Rams made last year. You know, just give me one more pass rusher. I mean, now they have 40 tackles and 40 ends in their four man front that are all formidable. How about that? Uh, and, you know, they could even throw out a NASCAR package with Reddick and Graham and Quinn yeah. and, you know, Sweat if they want, or they could get huge with Jordan Davis and Hargrave. I mean, just so much versatility and different things they can do there. And I'm all for it because they didn't give much up. And if I was a GM on a big time contender, I want one more D lineman. And that'll always be my trend. Even if I decide got Quinn, I want one more D lineman. If I get another one, I want one more D lineman. I think they're going to destroy the Steelers in this game. Um, they, this, Pittsburgh hasn't won in Philly since the 1960s. I mean, it, it, the Eagles are destroying people at home, um, they're coming off a bye. I've studied this Eagles team like to no end this week, and it's really hard to find weaknesses or places to attack. And the Steelers, as we know, are struggling. There's an outside chance TJ Watt plays some snaps, but they probably will be after the bye for the Steelers. I'm laying the 10 and a half. I think the Eagles win this one big. Love the Eagles in this game. It's a lot of points. Um, I don't know if yeah. I would put my hard-earned cash on it just because the line's so big, but if I had to go one side, I would I would go with the Eagles double digits in this one. And, and I like yeah. the way the Eagles are playing, and you're well-rested, and then you get even more reinforcements for the run you want to make here. Um, and at home against a rookie quarterback. How about this for quarterbacks for the Eagles coming up the rest of the year, by the way? So got Kenny Pickett this week, then Davis Mills and the Texans, then Taylor Heineke in Washington, Ooh. then Sam Ellinger. He's going to make his first start of the year here uh, for the Colts coming up. You got Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Then you got Ryan Tannehill. Then you got Daniel Jones and the Giants. Then Justin Fields. Then Dak and the Cowboys. Then Andy Dalton and whatever's going on with New Orleans. Or will that be Andy Dalton? I'm not even sure. At that point, yeah, right. Daniel Jones again and the, and the New York Giants. You know, if the New York Giants are for real, the, the Packers can figure things out. You know, the Cowboys are good. There's some good opponents there, and, and most of them are the ones they're going to be fighting for for the top spot in the NFC East. But you have to like a lot of rookie second year quarterbacks on the schedule for the Eagles the rest of the way too. So that's not a that's not a terrible schedule at all. And even some of the oh. the good quarterbacks that they're going to be playing, like Aaron Rodgers, uh that's not going great right now in Green Bay either. No, I mean the Dallas game's the only one that looks formidable. I'm not saying they're going to run the table, but as we mentioned with Baltimore, this team is rolling in a great situation set up. I mean of course injuries could hit anybody, but uh how about this little nugget for you? Do you happen to know, I'm sure you don't what the first winning season in Philadelphia history was? Uh, no, Philadelphia Eagles history? Yeah. Because I imagine you could go back to a baseball team in like 18... 18- <laughs> right, right, right. They've been around a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Just to um, cut the... Just during, yeah, World no. War, just during World War II, the wow. Steagles, these two teams had to join forces. Oh, <laughs> Steagle, I've heard about the Steagles. Yeah, the Steagles were six and five as the first time Philly had a winning record. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So they even <laughs> owe that to the Pittsburgh Steelers. See, I'm getting something out of it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we both like the Eagles in this oh, one. Yeah. Um, so we've got the Quinn trade. We've had the, the Christian McCaffrey trade, Robbie Anderson to Arizona, James Robinson to the New York Jets, Jonathan Hankins. We didn't really talk much about that tra trade, kind of under the radar, mm -hmm. um, and a seventh-round pick to Dallas for a six. So those were the trades so far leading up to the trade deadline. Do you see any more big ones coming? I like this angle of Brian Dable, who is the offensive coordinator at Alabama. A shout-out to New York Post's Paul Schwartz, who brought this up. And I knew Dable coached at Alabama, but I didn't know exactly when. And Dable coached Jerry Judy, and Jerry Judy is the subject of some trade chatter. And that's something that the uh, uh, that the Giants could need, even though they have so many bodies at wide receiver. Now they've moved one off in Kadarius Toney. Um, Kadarius Tony is part of that list of, of trades that's happened. Uh, I collected that list even before the, the Kadarius Tony, Tony trade that happened while we were recording yesterday. So could now that they've traded off a wide receiver, could they now add another receiver? Because they still need to figure something out there to help out their young quarterback if they're going to make a run in New York. I do think that's going to be an active trade deadline. However, 
there's so many teams that I bet look at this thing and say, man, I wish this was two weeks later. Cause I don't know if I'm buying or selling, you know, I mean, the giants obviously aren't a selling team at this point, but should they really go buy people and make a run? Like that might be overshooting a little bit, but they absolutely need a receiver either this year or next. I mean, I think Denver needs to sell. Um, they're kind of middle of the road in terms of cap space next year. I just pulled those numbers up. I thought they were worse off, but I mean, Chubb could go. I bet there's five to eight substantial trades. I'll be let down, but I'm excited that there are. There might. Be. It's already been one of the better trade deadlines. Yeah, it's true. And we're not like even on the clock yet for for that trade deadline on Tuesday. So, of course, more of that next week. We'll have some more trades, hopefully, to talk about. Maybe some more rumored possible trades there. But yeah, Chubb and Judy sound like they're at least listening to offers there mm-hmm. in Denver for some of those players, maybe the Steelers and Chase Claypool as well, potentially listening to offers. And uh, what happens a lot of times is teams need to be blown away and, and not all teams are willing to blow people away for some of those. Right. Traits. right we'll right. see if, uh, and who knows, maybe in the Philadelphia, uh, the Rams feel like they're looking I'd for say Rams can get somebody. Yeah. yeah I, I, I bet acres see. moves in some way, shape or form, but that's not as big a deal as it used to be. The Rams tried for McCaffrey. There's been some mm-hmm. Alvin Kamara chatter. Could that be a move that Ooh. the, Los Angeles Rams go try to make. Uh, there was a cryptic tweet by Alvin Kamara, and everyone was like, "Oh, he's getting traded." He was. It was like Michael Jackson eating popcorn. It's like, "Oh, here it comes. There's something's going to happen." <laughs> of course, no, no. Uh, I, I'd probably be having fun with fans if I was a player too, and, and doing sure. that stuff. But I think there will be action, though. Hopefully, and it makes it a lot more fun. Uh, the trade deadline in other sports is a lot more fun, and usually, not much happens at the NFL trade di- deadline. Already, one of the better deadlines. We'll see if some more big moves happen before November first. Next up on the list of games in week eight here. How about this one, Matt? This surprisingly now is a massive game and potentially for first place in the NFC South, oh. with the Carolina Panthers at the Atlanta Falcons. Neither one of these teams over 500, but uh, the entire division's under 500. Uh, this is a dreadful division. I mean, just when I thought the AFC South was as bad as it gets, this might be worse, especially after the Bucks lost last night. <sighs> I'll take the four points. Uh, I mean, this could be the shortest game in NFL history, you know, just run, 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 run and play defense. I would hope, you know, a guy like Pitts and London actually show up in this game. Uh, I'm hoping that DJ Moore continues to be, you know, viable for fantasy. Um, Low scoring though. I'll just take points. I feel like I want to take points here too because of I like the way I've seen the Panthers play in a small sample with PJ Walker at quarterback. He's yeah, yeah. really played the best for them. Uh he's competent. Targets, right. He's confident. Uh can get out on the move a little bit. Um, you know, it's kind of very and you're right, it's gonna be very similar game plans, very similar rosters right now for the the Panthers and the Falcons mm-hmm. with the way these things are going. So yeah, um who can score first and who can play keep away might be how this game goes, but Man, the Falcons, we were talking about them being the first pick in the NFL draft, potentially, and they could be leading the uh, NFC South after week eight. How about that one? Oh, I mean, Giants, Seahawks, Falcons. I mean, they were like 30, 31, 32 in preseason power ranks, you know, mixing the Texans and Bears, you know. And the reason I like the points for the, the Panthers isn't because I think they're great, but just new coach, new quarterback, definitely mm-hmm. a different vibe last week to the Carolina Panthers. Oh, 100%. And I- I would argue the Panthers D is the best of the four units. I would buy that argument. Yeah. 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 How about the Broncos at the Jaguars in week Mm. eight here? This is the London game. There's a lot of talk this week about, um, (laughs) about uh, Russell Wilson doing exercises while everyone else is sleeping for four hours on the plane. Like, uh, aside from that, because I'm not going to pile on with Russell Wilson because it's just too easy at this point. (laughs) Uh, both of these teams at two and five. This is a home game for the Jaguars. They're, they're building a little bit of a fan base in London. So Wembley Stadium, is this a home game for the Jags? Uh, Jacksonville favored too, like a home team two, by two and a half points. Yeah, I'm going to lay the points. Uh, I have no faith in Denver. I, I really do think that they're going to make some changes. The whole organization probably knows it, feels it in terms of trade deadline stuff, let alone maybe coaching yeah. hires soon. And, you know, I mean, like it's probably a bad work environment and, it kind of reminds me of the one I lived in through for, for Cleveland. You just knew bad things are coming. It's hard yeah. to go to work every day. And Jacksonville at least has been playing close games. I think they kind of turn the corner here and beat a team by five to seven ish neighborhood. I'll lay the points. I'm going to take the points. 
I'm going to take the points just because this game should be a coin flip. And so if I'm getting two and a half, then I'll just take them because I have no idea what to expect from either one of these teams at this point. They could both yeah. play pretty good and they could both just completely lay an egg. Uh, I do like that that home field advantage for the Jaguars. They're building yeah. in London with all those games. And, um, you know, Russ is going to play in this game. Last week it was Brett Rippon. That didn't work out great either. There's just too much talent on the Broncos to be this bad. And I, I, Ooh, I don't trust them now. <laughs> I don't either. But man, um, you know, Sertan locking up whoever is even the first option at, at receiver, Christian Kirk, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but just give, give me the points, give me the Broncos, and we'll move on from that. Yeah, game. it's not a fun one. But I'll watch every snap business to stand alone. I'll watch every snap after I wake up, and I'm not getting up at 6 30 a.m. Pacific time. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> yeah. For that game, I'll be honest with you all. I'm going to have to play catch up on what happens in the first half of that game for sure. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. More games next coming up week seven preview and, or week eight preview and picks. Now, a word from our sponsor, Better Help. Focusing on problems instead of solutions, it is that is a very common thing for human beings to do. It's a very, very common thing for me to do. And it can be very difficult to train your brain to stay in that problem solving mode when you're faced with a challenge in life and challenge just come up every second in life. Now you've got something in your pocket that's going to remind you of a challenge probably in the next five minutes. Right. And so if you're focused on challenges instead of focused on solutions, that's where a therapist can help to make sure you are checking in every week, hitting the points you want to every week, getting through the things you need. And when you find that solution when you find your own solutions there's no better feeling and so you can become a better problem solver making it easier to accomplish those goals no matter how big or small uh, with the help of a therapist and if you're thinking about giving therapy a try better help is a great option convenient accessible affordable entirely online and you can get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey in just minutes and if you don't like the ser- the therapist that you're connected with you can switch therapists at any time sometimes it takes multiple therapists to figure out your exact match so when you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get a 10% off your first month. Again, that is promo code locked on. Go to betterhelp.com slash locked on. That's better H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. Here we go, Matt. Week eight, Bears at Cowboys. The Bears off a big win, but now trading away pieces. So they're one of those teams in the middle that we talked about. It feels like everyone's 500 and teams don't know if they're buyers or sellers. The Bears recognize at least, ah, good yeah. win, but we're still sellers, which hey, is the, smart. smart. That's the way to be. Yeah, pick up some picks, you know, build things in your, your own likeness. I think they keep this closer than 10, though. I mean, I'm not convinced that Fields is turning a corner. But I think the offensive structure is with design quarterback runs and the physicality that we saw on Sunday night or Monday night, whatever that was in New England. I think they keep this, they hang around, you know, and um, I don't know that Dallas's offense is so high flying that they'll beat teams by 10. I mean, they're going to sack fields about a hundred times though. Uh, Michael Parsons is a little banged up though. So oh yeah, uh, if he may or may not play in this one from what I'm gathering, probably will still play, but that's been the big Achilles heel for both fields taking too many sacks in the line, giving pressure on top of it. So mm-hmm. those two things combined are just, you know, too much pressure, which worries me for the Bears in this one. So this could absolutely be a Cowboys blowout. But again, yeah, the the Cowboys offense hasn't been high flying. And just like the the Falcons, the way that the Bears have been leveling the playing field is running the heck out of the football, playing a little bit of defense, keeping things close. So I like Dallas Cowboys, but I'll take those 10 points and think that the Bears can play the same brand they have been playing, which got them to this point and had them beating the New England Patriots. And I, I love the the that may, maybe they figured something out with with offensive scheme yeah. and how to use Justin Fields a little bit better, a little bit more efficiently. And if that continues here, yeah, keep it within 10 points. So give me give me the points here, but you, you have to like the Dallas Cowboys straight up in this one. Sure, sure. I agree with that. The Miami Dolphins at the here. Detroit okay. Lions, yeah. the four and three Dolphins at the one and five Detroit Lions. Miami favored by three and a half points here. On the road at the Lions, did we expect too much from the Lions this year coming in, Matt? Apparently, yeah. I mean, now I think his seat is warm. Um, I they need to get the six, seven wins. I don't know that that's in the cards, but they're coming off their bye. Swift, St. Brown are back. I mean, I, I think they'll score points. 
I think there'll be a lot of points in this game, period. I mean, I'm just thinking about the speed of Waddle and Hill in a dome, you know, I mean, against that bad defense. I think the line's good, though. I don't think I would touch this with my own hard-earned bucks, but I will say Miami beats them by more than three and a half. Haven't seen enough from the Lions this year at all, and really that defense has been the most disappointing part because if you're trying to bite people's kneecaps off, you got to play defense. To, you know, <laughs> yeah. with the Bears, we've seen it with the Falcons, and we've seen it with some other teams that are scrappy and and – uh, you know, staying close to 500, the Lions haven't been that four and two Titans at one and four Texans, Texans at home. The road Titans, though, favored by two and a half. I know Tannehill's not 100%. It'd be fun to see Willis, but I think either way, they win this thing by more than a field goal. T- Titans D is solid, everything's going through Henry. Really good coaching job by Vrabel. I, I think they go on the road and win this one, that division. Henry loves the Texans too. So, oh, yeah. If Henry can go big again against those Houston Texans and uh, just the Texans just quite aren't quite there. They don't have the horses yet. I guess it's similar to the uh, mm-hmm. to where the um, where the Detroit Lions are right now. Which is, yeah. We, we can we can probably go in there and bully the Texans. That's probably what teams feel like when they're going to Houston. Wouldn't be super shocking if Brandon Cooks or even Laramie Tunsil ended up on a different team next week, too. We thought that for a couple of years. And, right, uh, right. Certainly, there's so many teams that need offensive line help. This would be the time when Tunsil would make a lot of sense. I don't know. The asking price is probably high. Is the, team high yeah. kid is the big question. Brandon Cooks hasn't gotten traded in a year or so. He's about to. <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> He's like, wow, this is crazy. I've been in the same place for two whole years. What's I'm going on? Buy a house. Yeah. Right. Uh, he, his contract, though, has guarantees that I think is the reason why he hasn't been traded recently. So I don't know if that gets better next year or not, but that might be one of the hangups as well with the, with the, with the new structure they, of his They contract. bumped him up in the offseason, I think. So maybe yeah. he's not as tradable as we think. Washington Commanders at Indianapolis Colts. It's the three and four Commanders at the three, three and one Colts. And in this one, we've got new starting quarterback. What do you think about Sam Ellinger starting for the Colts now? Is that is that a is that just like a, okay? We're we're going to be practical here and uh, contractually and everything else. Matt Ryan's looked bad. Let's just change. Or do you think like, hey, we're three and three. Let's go win a division. We believe in this quarterback who had a great preseason, by the way, statistically. I think it'll be interesting in that deep down, I think it's a tank job and Hey, we just can't, we can't put Ryan out there anymore. We've seen enough, but just the fact that he has wheels in a Daniel Jones like manner, Mm -hmm. I I think this is a different wrinkle for this team. And Taylor's going to get the ball 8,000 times. And um, I think the Colts defense is pretty good. I think I'll lay the points here in in Indy. Um, I didn't expect, you know, Ellinger versus Heineke when we saw this one. I thought it might be yeah. a Wentz revenge game, you know? Right, yeah, Wentz and, and and Ryan. That was supposed to be the big game. But uh, so, yeah, Heineke. And that's the other thing is, is Heineke and the commanders in a position to go into the Colts' house and beat them anyway, even if it is the, the first time started there with Sam Ellinger. So um, give, give me the Colts as well. Three points is, is right about where I'd put it. So it's kind of yeah. a push for me. I wouldn't be putting my money on it. But if I had to, I I'd say give me the home Colts. It's a team, it's a, a quarterback that the commanders can't really prepare for right now. Get them out on the move, roll out and stuff. Just adds a different element to that offense. Yeah, I agree. And last but not least, we've got Monday Night Football, the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. Really, the biggest story with this one is Jamar Chase, who's going to miss up to six weeks now with a hip injury. How big of a factor is that for the, the Bengals? And do you still think they should be favored by three points on the road here? I do. I don't have much faith in the Browns, but just a massive, massive injury, though. I mean, hips scare you. Sometimes they're all year long, too. There might be more news on that. I still think since he covers because I think since he will stop the run and that's what the, 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 the whole Browns key. And I don't think the Browns run defense is any good at all. And I like T Higgins, too. So and yeah. Tyler Boyd, they've got weapons there. Give me the Bengals by six in this one. All right. Thanks, everybody, for making Peacock and Williamson your first listen every day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. We will be back after all of the week eight action to break it all down Monday right here. Peacock and Williamson.